Hi everyone, this is Nibiru Watcher. It is December 15th, 2017, and I am on the Joanne Steen YouTube channel. And I want to thank you so much for all your collaboration on the Sun and Moon Simulator, which I now believe to be weaponized, and here is your proof. I just like to get right into this photo. So let's take a closer look. So let me zoom this in. Uh, sorry. So this is a nighttime event. We can see the moon and plasma that appears to be coming from the moon. Hmm. And uh, this object here, you want to call it a water droplet on a, you know, it's possible, but I believe it's a projection of the planetary object near the lens array appearing to be stationary in orbit. I'm going to explain that later why these dark objects I already did that in my last video. If you want to more detail, go back and watch. But the point of this video is to prove that the moon simulator, the sun simulator, and how many there are, who knows, but they are modular and it can build them bigger and bigger and bigger. When was this first created is a question I get asked, and I'm gonna venture a guess somewhere. They began this project in 1985. Due to the patent, and the strategic defense initiative that had started the building project of this amazing project, modular, building it one hexagonal piece at a time. So let's look at the photographic evidence of this sun simulator in its heliosynchronous orbit around the sun. In other words, it follows the path of the space station. So here we get side-by-side -side photos of the... Here in this picture here, we can see the International Space Station. Make a nice look at that. That's on the space station. We see it all the time. You can go on and look at it. Here we see... During the California fires, somebody snapped a shot of the green laser coming from the moon. Right? Okay. And then we get nice, unkim trailed sun set. <laughs> All looks exactly the same. And now we get this plasma arc reaction from the moon. Well, 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 you know, in light of that, let's look at the patent again and just kind of show you what we're viewing here. Roughly the sun simulator pat. Uh, this device here is the arc lamp. And according to the patent, it's an 1800 watt lamp. It emits the light. It ref This focuses all this energy in one direction and bounces it back through a bunch of four group of lenses. So four lenses per arc lamp in this setup. It could, and here we can see the looking down on this array of lenses. Here are the arc lamps, see the little arcing here. There's all this outline. So each lens, there's four for each one of these. With that being put out of the way, we've seen this component. Let's look at the uh, proof of some of the lens arrays that's out here. In this, this is the addictedsports.com. We can see the moon. This is supposed to be the moon, right? This is, I can leave a link for this. This is crazy, right? And we can see the reflection. You, re reflection of the green lens array reflecting on the water. We can see our interesting object here that they're hiding this object. Again, we still see this moon 
and the next frame we can go y we can see the planetary object and the moon simulator looking something exact right out of the there's your shadowy round object from right from the web camera and then here this is today over in germany we could see the sun simulator rising in the sky and then coming behind some chemtrail clouds the moon simulator has an orbiting distance from the earth at about 126 miles now here is today's photograph of the sun simulator in front of the actual sun now just look at this this these all these little hexagonal objects including this one are the projected image from the lens array that we see in the this object here the sun simulator that was reflected on the clouds and it's all over the internet now that's exactly what we're seeing here in this object uh, excuse me here okay now let's watch the setting sun this is today look at the date December 15th look how it projects the lenses in a whole array this isn't just on the camera this is happening on every single camera look at the lens how it follows this thing straight doesn't that look like something straight off the international that the international space station has been working on i don't think it's attached <laughs> that's just kind of a joke the international sun simulator Man, it seems like the NASA space station, though, does follow the path of the sun and its heliosynchronous orbit. And this green object here is, I believe, from the lens array, which I showed you in the early video, actually reflects on the water. So you can't call it a lens flare because the lens flare is in the lens. This, in this photo, showed you reflecting on the water so how could something reflect on the water see it here and there it is reflecting on the water behold okay and let's go back to this drawing here if i could find it okay this is today let's watch the rising sun in germany and all the illusions in the sky so here excuse me this is the setting sun and in lake starnberg in germany we could still make out this light system here see these shadows just a classic pattern of your sun simulator it looks like the star of david yeah for that one and look at you could almost make out that same thing that mb33 had captured depending on where this what uh, cloud chemtrails object that it refracts off of to give you that image that's why it's not seen directly in front of it sometimes it is now let's watch this again so here comes the setting sun let's go back in time and wind this thing back and watch how this hexagonal lens and all these little lenses see this here this is see that that's as clear as day. So here you have the sun simulator looking like the Star of David with all these shadow objects with this huge exposing this giant honeycomb lens system right in front of a chemtrail cloud. There you go. It has been weaponized. So thank you, Joe and Steen. Now let's go on to the electrolaser technology that I believe that we just witnessed over in Australia that we saw on the Joanne Steen channel. It is a directed energy weapon, such as the ones we're using the California fires. Now, it uses to form an electrically conductive laser-induced plasma channel. That's a mouthful. 
What that really means is when they turn this laser on from the source to the target, like the, like the uh, surface of the earth, the, it ionizes the gas, the oxygen, and the nitrogen around the laser beam itself, forming a channel, which will set up a current. An ionized gas, like you see in a fluorescent tube, allows electricity to flow from top to bottom. Or bottom to top, it goes from ground. I mean, if you ever want to follow the electron theory, it's a theory, by the way. However, it does form a channel. An ionized gas sets the gases into an electric conductive state, forming plasma. And then we go a little further down to this laser-induced plasma channel. Emits a beam of laser into the air. The laser beam rapidly heats and ionizes the surrounding gases to form plasma. The plasma forms electrically conductive plasma channel. That's exactly what happened in that moon photo. Now, this is not a patent. This is used technology. Publicly traded applies energetics, formerly Ionitron, develops directed energy weapons for the military and has produced a device called the Joint IED Neutralizer. It is for, uh, ah, they could use it forever they want. Look at this. This is where I think it was began construction on this simulators death star whatever you want to call it the in 1985 was tested an electro laser and its targets on aircraft strategic it was known as the phoenix project within the strategic defense initiative that was initiated in 1983 the same year that the ira as telescope the infrared telescope spotted the Nibiru system planets in 1983. Check that out. Not to mention the California fires, which all started in Napa Valley, Sonoma area, all had their fire start at the launch of the movie Geostorm. Mm. Very interesting. So long range high-powered lasers remember when i talked about this drawing that the moon and sun simulator powered by microwave beams i want to touch on this topic this component here this array of what do they call them rectennas that convert microwave energy being transmitted from the solar collectors check this out now Wayne Steiger, but, and this is just mirrored on a slightly slanted for truth channel, had captured the same object. He wants to point out what I want to talk about. These are not solar collectors. I believe these are the very rectennas that are capturing the microwave energy and projecting the laser beam into the backside into these solar simulator. Look at that. The evidence is astounding. If you got more pictures of this object with plasma coming energy of any kind from the moon or the sun, the next time we hear reports of fire, get your cameras pointing in the direction of the sun or the moon where it should be. And uh, wow, that's pretty, uh, pretty scary stuff, right? So... I hope I covered the topic of this fairly well, of the moon simulator. And for those of you, why the biggest purpose, I believe, they not only able to weaponize this object, but it was to hide the incoming solar uh, eclipses, so that when a planetary object passes in front of it, like I have this dish here, they could turn on the simulator and keep light shining in the sky like we see in this halo.
And uh, I wish I would have had a yellow bulb for that. Back this light on the ceiling would have been, if that had been six blades, that would have been even better with a yellow light bulb because that would pretty much look like the sun simulator right there. The piece of paper display basically explains the chemtrails, how they can make the sun look larger than it actually is. High altitude clouds gives you a larger sun. I mean, smaller sun, low altitude clouds gives you a bigger sun. And then when this thing is naked, like we see it, we're going to basically see lo looks like the star of David, which is basically because we have a spinning cube. So I have plenty of evidence in my last video. I just wanted to show you that this thing was weaponized. Just go back and watch my previous video. I also like to point out that the real suns does not have uh, its light rays are basically straight, which proves that the fake sun in the middle during these dark halos, you could see that it changes in size. You see that? That's impossible for a real sun. Think about it. Notice the diameter of the outer light does not change. These are eclipses, either partial or full. And it does emit light. I did show you a demonstration on my last video how a 65 inch Fresnel lens can produce 3000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures, which could melt a quarter inch steel. So please check one more quick thing uh, that the Washington Post had been posting this uh, constellations, the IRS telescope. This was posted in 1983 and the IRS had captured a heavenly body near the constellation, constellation Orion. Multiple articles, the Orion constellation. Remember the three stars, the pyramids of Egypt? Heavenly body, Zachariah Sitchin had it, said he was justified in the planet X. <laughs> and now we're in the winter time, approaching the solstice, when the time when the Earth is the closest to the Orion constellation where this whole object came from. Hmm, just something to think about. <laughs>